Hey everybody. Hey YouTube. Um, it's it's me, Kyle. It's me, Kyle again. It's about uh 2:15 a.m. in the morning. Um, I think it's so it's Sunday technically. Um, and I just wanted to do a quick video, guys. I, I kind of finished. This is my rough final draft um, of my letter to the UN uh, Nations Rapture on Torture. So I wanted to just read it to you guys. Um, I added some stuff in the end and some stuff in the middle. And if uh, if some of you were, you know, just like, okay, how, how do I organize all this? Maybe it could give you some ideas. So I wanted to just go ahead and read it real quick. So, um, and then in the link, I'm going to put that in the description again, but, but look at my last video, but I will, I will go ahead and put that link and then the email that we're supposed to send it to. I'm still going to do some touch-ups on it, um, probably the end, but I kind of wanted to read y'all the end about like, um, how they were asking in the submissions to, um, to maybe submit some, some ways that we, we think society the way society thinks, the way communities thinks, uh, think, and the way that countries' governments interact can solve the issue of people not turning their back or being involved in, in doing torture. And so, I mean, we have a lot of people. I think I was talking to somebody tonight. We were talk. I was talking about like, um, what's the way to say it? Um, people doing unintentional evil because because I like somebody sent me a video tonight and it was somebody making fun of targeted individuals then we have some gang stalkers who think that they're actually helping their communities to watch dangerous people and it's people who are being it were like innocent people who are being experimented on and tortured that they're actually adding additional harassment to so the, the systems are set up to where people are like oh well those people are mentally ill or they're dangerous or whatever and then and they think they're doing the right thing by speaking out against us or gang stalking us and they're doing horrible evils uh without even knowing it and you know i think i'm going to do um i think i'm going to do a live stream like later this week or maybe at the beginning of the week on some people who um have made fun of us like acting like they're targeted individuals and because I, I need to get a cathartic my cathartic anger out about that because it's such a serious issue. If you are somebody who doesn't think that this is happening and you think that targeted individuals are just selfish, mentally ill people, we are not. This is actually happening. And you need to look up the topic more, look up some, you know, watch some videos on my channel. Um, you know, it, it, my heart started beating rapidly and my blood started boiling when I saw this video, this woman like just making fun of us you know and it's such a serious thing you know and I, I understand like joking around and stuff like that um but i think a lot of people they don't understand they think it's a totally something totally different happening and they think that you know they're the good guys making fun of selfish people that's not the case like there's uh, millions of people millions upon millions of people on the globe who are being tortured with microwave weapons, integrated directed energy weapon systems, uh, neuro weapons uh, that are affecting, manipulating, uh, damaging their brain, brain tissue, and the way their brain functions, and suppressing certain areas of their brain, uh, monitoring their thoughts, 24-hour-a-day uh, V2K responding to thoughts, like high-tech stuff, advanced stuff, but it, it's happening, and the world has to deal with it. Okay, like I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll go through that on a live stream, guys, but I just want to read this real quick. I'm going to try and be, be brief about this video because I still want to make some changes on it. So, Dear United Nations Raptor on Torture, uh, my name is Kyle Sladen. I live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I am a United States citizen being tortured and experimented on by weapon systems as well as surveilled and harassed 24 hours a day for about a decade. I have been tortured by integrated directed energy weapon systems and neuro weapons since 2011. It is non-stop torture with remote microwaves and neuro weapons torture manipulating my brain and nervous system. I am also surveilled with this remote technology 24 hours a day. My surroundings are surveilled as well as my thoughts. Along with this torture I have been harassed the entire time by every community I have lived in during this time 
and stalked continuously on the streets of my city uh, by people participating in the stalking on foot and in their vehicles. Uh, law enforcement and first responders have participated in the stalking every second of the day since it began through DHS fusion centers, community watch groups, and organizations like Infrar. Uh, the constant, constant, what did I do there? The constant torture, brain injury, attacks, and stalking are a literal hell. Decapitalize hell. Should I capitalize hell? I don't know. I'll look that up. Let's see. The, con <laughs> the constant torture, brain injury, attacks, and stalking are a literal hell for everyone who is targeted by this lethal program. And these weapons should not be called non-lethal weapons at all. They are very lethal, especially if they are being uh, held on somebody. Streams of energy and electromagnetic fields 24 hours a day for years and years and years without stopping. The non-lethal weapons that maybe if you hit somebody with it and then they could move out of the way, that'd be non-lethal. They have been turned into the most vicious, most lethal, most uh, cell-destroying, and body and nervous system and brain destroying weapons that have ever existed by the by the way they are being used the way that something is used is determines whether it's lethal or, or non-lethal not not just oh it's directed energy so it's non-lethal how are you are you just holding that are you putting an electromagnetic field around somebody's head and and constantly pulsing signals to their vestibular system their ears their eyes transcranial the um, nerves on their their um, cranium to send signals constant signals to the brain and to constantly strengthen this um, you know this remote connection with the brain and the nervous system very very lethal uh, so the remote electromagnetic torture to the brain and body is only one angle of the constant attacks and degradation of my life to the best of my knowledge and research, this constant torture is carried out by a third-party contractor under one of the intelligence agencies, and I think it's NSA. I think I have a contractor under the NSA uh, called Arcadis, but I'm just trying to make it kind of kind of general. And I think we do need to say that you know that it is um, intelligence agencies and then third-party contractors. Um, subcontractors and security agencies manufacturing the weapons some manufacture the weapon systems and do experimentation with the weapon systems some just manufacture the weapon systems some uh, just don't manufacture the weapon systems but just experiment with them right and it's this whole web whole web of contractors and subcontractors on your you know and so I, I talk about this a lot in my videos um, constant neural monitoring of my visual cortex and other parts of my brain is done by human operators and autonomous autonomous I had trouble with that last time autonomous systems and I have a 24 hour a day voice to skull and I have 24 hour a day voice to skull in which human operators and AI software human operators through AI software but sometimes the, the, the AI software can do lots of things just autonomously and do it by hyper game theory, you know. Um, software pulse voices to my inner ear through my brain and respond to thoughts and visuals that my brain produces. My brain is constantly pulsed with electromagnetic fields and beam forming weapon systems to create both physical and emotional pain 24 hours a day and has never stopped for even a second since it began in 2011. And I'm simplifying, but I think it's been a lot longer where I knew I was being a, being tortured, they knew that I knew I was being tortured, that was in 2011. And then it, it, it was like, just it just blew up, right? Before that, it was like torture, there was gang stalking, but I didn't know it was gang stalking. People would do weird stuff to me um, in stores that I would go to. Um, there'd be pain in my body, and I think they were doing a lot of stimulation, the vagus nerve, but I thought it was just my Crohn's disease. So I didn't even, I didn't know that this existed, and plus, you know, when the over torture started, I just want to mention this because people, 
you know, a lot of people who maybe make fun of us and stuff or think that this isn't happening, they're like, oh, well, you just, you imagine this, blah, blah, blah. Well, um, you know, when it happened to me, especially the V2K, it took me a year to understand that it was voice to skull. I thought that my ears had been damaged somehow and that I could just hear people above me, like I could just hear their voices. So, you know, w when you're experiencing this, like targeted individuals that, that get hit by these weapons, and tortured you try and think of anything else that it could be but you don't jump straight to oh I'm being hit with directed energy weapons it takes a long time for a lot of us to because we're like no we don't know that exists right um, plus plus it's ridiculous and this is obvious it's ridiculous that you know um, more implantation by companies uh, implantation RFID chips and then uh, tattoos and things and nanotechnologies are coming out to the public all these technologies surveillance technologies biometric readings and things like that functional MRI that is remote like far away from people at MIT and other those things exist so how did all these crazy people and this is why I'm saying you know targeting is real and it's not mentally ill people but how did all these mentally ill people just imagine the future? You know, you got to ask yourself that question if you don't believe this is happening. How did we just, like, how is all this stuff coming out into the public and we were just, our imaginations and mental illness predicted it? It's, it's just, it's ridiculous. You know, that's just, it's, that's a ridiculous thought. The, the problem is, and, and this is why, you know we really like testimonies are very good and we all want to talk about what's going on with us like and I've done years of videos saying like what's happening to me with my gang stalking and what and I, I still do it but we have to do concrete we have to have like stuff by James Udorno, Robert Duncan concrete articles things that you can put in people's faces so that they can't deny it because people people who aren't going through this are going to want to deny this up and down it's like a survival incident they don't want this to be happening so if you're saying that this is happening to you somebody can be oh well, that's mental ill they can justify it any way till sunday right and i think that maybe sometimes we have this this feeling like well i'm going through so, this very painful deadly thing people are going to be compassionate they're going to be like well let me give you the benefit of the doubt not on something like this people don't want to believe it's happening they don't want to believe that they could be hit at any time or their family could be put in danger at any time by weapon systems controlled by people that are doing it on a lottery system they'll do anything to justify that it isn't happening that it, that's becoming better but there is a, a human nature thing that goes along with that um, and that's why it's it's like why this can go on for so long in every community and people would participate in gang stalking without even knowing sometimes not even knowing what they're participating in because uh, they just can't can't believe what's happening they don't want to believe it right they want to trust an authority so it's like that that human nature thing that the very very evil people in the military industrial complex and intelligence agencies they prey on that um, that human nature to really deny anything that's like oh man that could happen to me at any time and it can be done remotely and I'm not really safe in my home you know they'll do anything to say that's mental illness and we've seen I mean we all experience that um, okay so because of the secret nature of these crimes the exact protocols and exact perpetrators are debated upon by all of those experiencing this never-ending torture and harassment, but all of us experiencing it have researched intensely to understand the bottom lines of who is doing this to us, how, and why. The physical and mental devastation of this non-stop torture is so horrifying and debilitating that it's very hard to do it justice. Constant psychic driving with voice to skull, uh, with voice to skull, with constant brain manipulation and degradation, using remote electromagnetic fields and beam forming directed energy is constantly used on me with no stopping. External directed energy weapons streams to the body wear me down and create horrible physiological problems and constant perpetual traumatic stress. I think there's another word for that, like, um, is it perpetual? post-traumatic stress syndrome or um, 
that's that's not right. It's something else. Maybe somebody could put that in the comments. When you're when you have post traumatic stress and it's it doesn't stop. So you're not it's you like you don't get out of the trauma, you don't get out of the torture, and it's this post traumatic stress that just builds up. And it's not it's not like, like you're in a car wreck, right? And then the car wreck ends and you have post traumatic stress about it, but you can heal, your brain can heal. And, and your psyche can heal and everything like that. It's not like that. It continues on. It continues on, and you it, it never stops. So you can't you can't hit this point where it's post. It's ongoing. It's post and all the time present. Um, what is what is that called? I probably need to find out the right term for that. Uh, the constant torture from the integrated directed energy weapons. And the stalking and mistreatment from people around me wherever I go uh, has has caused serious chronically conditioned problems such as isolation, unemployment, burdens on my family, and such fatigue that it is hard to do the simplest day-to-day -day things to keep my life organized and livable. With remote electromagnetic fields and streams of electromagnetic energy, my human operator my human operator attackers. I guess I'll just leave that as is. My human operator attackers and automated systems. I put automated artificial intelligence. I don't. I might change that. Okay. So, and automated artificial intelligence systems through various protocols interact with my brain and implant artificial emotions, artificial visuals in my visual space, and many other forms of mind rape, and nervous system pain, and severe nervous system system To the best of my knowledge and research, and also from experiencing the torture, torture it is trauma-based mind control where the constant physical trauma, where the constant trauma-based mind control where the constant physical trauma, physical and mental, where the constant physical and mental. Trauma changes how the brain functions to be able to manipulate it better. The neuroweapons torture has gone on so long for me that I feel like my personality has gone through a dramatic change. It does feel like that sometimes. My core is still the same. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much. When your emotions and your thinking is changed, it's kind of like it's kind of like you're you're not the same person. I mean, we're all we all change through our lives, even people who aren't targeted, but it's drastic, you know. It's like sometimes it's like I'll hang out with my family and then like I won't see them for like a month or something like that or some of my family's family members I won't see for a month and it's like every day you're going through this traumatic episode um you change so much and it's like you're seeing it and you've been through this month of just every day being so life-changing um it's it's so weird it's so weird i know everybody kind of changes um you know every day by every experience you have but such traumatic experiences and every day fighting for your life it's like every day you become a very very different person um you think if you got like into a car wreck every day or you found out you had cancer every day something that big every day it changes you so much and it's hard to psychologically deal with just to begin with and then you've got artificial brain manipulation um, and, and actual you know physical pain to the head physical damage to the head and then uh, severe like through electromagnetic frequencies big changes to the brain and then you're going through like pain to the body uh, you know upturning of your life every day and just trying to hold on to your life and it's such a big thing every day it's like like you're going through a horror movie every day right so you see those horror movies where it's like somebody there's a, a night or something of true terror and somebody survives and it changes them 
like the character changes so much because it's just this night of horror that's what targeted in every day of a targeted individual's life is like living through a horror movie and I, you know sometimes it's a little bit it's a little bit like you can find some comfort things are but but most of the time it's like you're going through a horror movie every day for for long lengths of time uh, the neuro weapons torture has gone on so long for me uh, that I feel like my personality has gone through a dramatic change. With the neuro weapons, my attackers and the automated systems can also interfere with how certain areas of my brain function, creating an electromagnetic cage for my own mind, which should be free for me to use and think like a normal human. And I do at the end, most of the stuff at the beginning is, is kind of the same. But I still wanted to just just go through it and show y'all. I did a, a full page, and I'm just, I'm gonna maybe tweak it and put put a little bit more. I hope they re, you know we really need to send in you know as many targeted individuals need to send in testimony and you know what you you know that that it's corporations, corporations, military industrial complex, governmental agencies uh, funding this torture. Um, you know, uh, because that, that's an important thing of the systematic. What's wrong with the system? Why this torture continues? Well, it's completely funded. It's completely funded, and it's like, oh, well, we have to do this. We have to learn more about the brain. Oh, and we're doing it to people who, you know, I, I guess some of these people that do it are like, oh, well, these people are expendable, and it's going to help a lot of other, it's going to protect a lot of other people. Right, and we've got to compete with Russia and China and other kinds, all kinds of justifications. I'm sure that the psychopaths like my attackers come up with, right? And that's a huge problem because it gets worse and worse and worse. And as they do more evil things, they justify more, right? Destroy families, like you know, my attackers. The, the guys on the V2K is still like, and a lot of this is automated chatterbox, but he's still like, you know, we have to do this. We've got to get this done. They will do anything, like even when I'm trying to do my best to help people, do anything to sabotage me, to make me look like a crazy person, to make me not liked by my family, which I have a loving family. There's confusion amongst some of my distant family and me, confusion amongst me and um, and my mom and dad, but it's, it's, it's better than a lot of target individuals have it with their family. So I just I want to be thankful about that, not bitch, bitch about that too much. Um, part of, let's see, part of, part of the harassment is hacking into my computer and disabling electronics in my home. My phone and computer are hacked into to be used as surveillance tools, and so my attackers can stop certain information I'm trying to get out or make it so hard for me to use these communication tools that it severely hampers my voice and the voice of other vin individuals who are targeted. Also, sometimes, I mean, they'll, like, heat up my phone, and I'm sure that can help them to create kind of a field around the area to surveil me better, and it can kind of just harass me. Sometimes when I'm using my computer, they will freeze up the computer so that it's psychological, right? It psychologically frustrates me, you know, just doing anything, anything uh, to intervene into my life while doing these huge things, the huge uh, brain torture, brain rape, along with those little things that they do along the way to make them all kind of add up, right? Um, and to get, you know, to get feedback, right? When I'm frustrated, they can, you know, record that EEG and then amplify that EEG to make me more frustrated. Um, so, uh, my attackers and automated targeting systems will also heat up or completely destroy many electronic devices in my home. Uh, this is to harass me and it's training, research, and development for the integrated directed energy weapon systems they use. Along with the 24-hour day torture that never stops, my neighbors participate in noise and harassment campaigns against me. Uh, one neighbor on the side of me will bang on his wall and run high-pressure water every time I go to the bathroom. To my research and knowledge, DHS fusion centers and other organizations use communication technology to coordinate harassment of this kind as well as community-based harassment and harassment when I move about in my city or anywhere else. And I didn't put the part when I went to West Virginia and it took a couple of days uh, for people actually in Green Bank to start doing community-based harassment, vehicular stalking with one-like cars, 
uh, people, you know, doing street theater and saying things about, like, um, about, like, thoughts in my head, like, when I was in the restaurant, you know, given information, maybe not even knowing, like, say this around them, and they didn't know it was maybe from the remote neural monitoring, but things like that, um, going to a completely different state. I want to, um, you know, I don't know when, but I, I do want to maybe go to Ecuador and some other places and see if I could maybe get a couple of months of it toned down before they can switch everything over, right? Because I think when you go, like, you know, Brian too has been traveling so much for so long that I think that they have adapted for that. Like, they're ready for him to move around. But I think some of us, if we're in one place for a long time and we first off do that, um, they're going to have to switch a lot of things around. Like, they... Because I think I'm being hit by, you know, microwave towers and certain things in my area, even um, over the horizon radar, that probably is, it's some, it's like it's some military installment or something like that in my city, you know, so they would have to switch all that over, um, you know, if you, if you go to another country. I don't know, that gets complicated, so we can talk about that later. Um, when, I, when I drive around the city... Uh, one light cars will pass by me. Street lights will be changed on me right as I drive up to them. Stalkers will coordinate their comings and goings and time them to always invade my vicinity and add the psychological torture and feeling of always being watched. Uh, stalkers and stores have bumped into me or tried to get into fights with me. Uh, not everyone in the city is involved in the stalking, obviously. Only a percentage of people who work for organizations such as DHS Fusion Centers and InfraGuard. It is clockwork harassment using whoever is available and has never stopped since it started in 2011. One of the most horrible aspects of all this torture and severe dehumanizing harassment is that per the protocol, is, per the protocol it is supposed to appear like mental illness. It is per the... Uh, Per the protocol, it is supposed to appear as mental illness. I've tried to get help several times from law enforcement and medical authorities, and they laugh at me or treat it as schizophrenia or other mental illness. Back in 2013, I was tricked into coming into an emergency room under the auspice of getting physical medical help, and it was a setup to throw me into a mental ward for two weeks. The biggest problem about these torture programs that span the globe is that they are carried out on innocent citizens. Now, this is the new part. Most of that was kind of the same. I added in the stuff about the hacking of my computer. Should, maybe I should have just read this last part. Um, but it can maybe get people thinking about how you want to set it up. You know, an introduction. Um, stuff about the, the physical, external microwave hits. The neuro weapons hits. Then a paragraph about the gang stalking. And then, you know, maybe intertwining that. Who's doing each of them right because it's different organizations and all their work is it, we're like buffalo right to the end they're using every part of us like the harassment and it's all these different angles i'm not sure if that's a good metaphor but um you know the gangs a lot of the gang stalkers don't know that we're being experimented on but that angle is harassment psychological uh trauma isolation to discredit us and then it plays in um, to the, the further experimentation and torture, right? So these different organizations doing different things all funneling in to targeting an individual, to targeting us. Um, so uh, the biggest problem about these torture programs... Hold on one second. Hold on one second. So the biggest problem about these torture programs that span the globe is that they are carried out on innocent citizens by agencies that were created to protect the citizens of our country. The weapon systems are manufactured by contractors with military clearances and little oversight. See, no oversight. No oversight. And no oversight. And the torture is also carried out by contractors working for intelligence agencies that are supposed to protect the people from terrorism and crime. So the, the agencies that are supposed to protect our countries from terrorism and crime and make sure the people are safe, they're creating the terrorism and the crime. 
and they're experimenting on people and then in some cases with with very a small percentage of targeted individuals they mind control them and torture them so much and they get to a desperate position and their mind control and they go and create violence you know and these agencies that they get more funding for that right uh, we've created like you know like 9-11 they've used it for all these the patriot act and taking more of our freedoms and rolling up to even now all these crises now they do that with targeted individuals use us <coughs> create fear in the community it's not helping anybody creating a scapegoat and making people feel afraid right I've got some gang stalkers um, like a, a family there's this this woman who really hates me I don't even know her um, but she may have been told something really scary about me that I never did creates this fear in the community like oh there's this dangerous person over there uh, and then they they gang stalk me and mess with my life and destroy my life when in actuality I'm being tortured to death and I have committed no crimes thought or otherwise real crimes or thought crimes even with this like they have implanted crap in my mind and my visual cortex but I'm not even a, I haven't even thought crazy things in my life pretty much I guess we all think crazy things I don't know about that but um, but but anyway it's like it's not creating a sense of safety it's not protecting a community it's not solidifying a community it's creating this fear and people are like well I'm just gonna make some money it's usually the 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 shittiest people in a community that agree to do this because they're greedy and they don't really care what's going on it's not the most stall war honorable citizens who are like I'm gonna protect my community and harass the crap out of that person that I have no idea who they are because somebody told me something right and it's creating creating more chaos creating more evil and, and all the while, I mean, even even if these people, I don't know, even if the gang stalkers did not know that we were being tortured, it would still be so evil. It would still be so evil and so stupid to do it, right? And that's, that's, hey, that's obvious. So the weapon systems are manufactured by contractors with military clearances and no oversight, and the torture is also carried out by contractors working for intelligence agencies that are supposed to protect the people from terrorism and crime. A whole industry has been created by the military industrial complexes of many countries built off of torture, experimentation, and destruction of innocent lives for the purposes of training, research, and development of weapon systems. And also, um, you know, feeding these federal agencies like Infragar and DHS fusion centers and community watch programs got to create chaos to have to have justification for the existence of, of funneling money into DHS fusion centers and that's why you know the current riots are, are very frightening because there's going to be more mob mentality amongst everyone and people are going to be like well you know we heard something about this person in the community like they're in Antifa or anything and on the other side they're going to be like well we heard something about this person in the community that we heard they were white supremacists or something like that and it's going to justify um, you know, building up people taking the law into their own hands or, or signing up with organizations like federal organizations, um, DH at Homeland Security, uh, to destroy people's lives. So it's just not going to be, it's not, they're not going to be catching terrorists. They, they're not going to be catching terrorists at all. They haven't caught any terrorists with targeting people. They usually uh, don't even target the really bad people. And so it's just going to be innocent lives destroyed, you know. Um, so, okay, so I read that. The advanced technologies used to read and write to the brain. Hold on one second, guys. Okay, the advanced technologies used to read, and that said 33, and that was a uh, complete coincidence, you know. Um, the advanced technologies used to read and write to the brain must be revealed to the public so that new laws can be written and new ways of detecting the misuse of these technologies can be created and proliferated. Let me read that again. The advanced technologies used to read and write to the brain must be revealed to the public so that new laws can be written and new ways of detecting the misuse of these technologies can be created and proliferated. New groups talking about such things as cognitive liberty, 
the right to have full ownership of your own thoughts. I mean, that's a serious topic. Anybody who's like laughing, and like, and I know mostly targeted individuals watch my videos, um, but have ownership of your thoughts. I mean, we people are talking about cognitive loop. It's a very serious subject, and it, there's a reason why it's being talked about because uh, people's brains are being read, being monitored. So intellectual property is being stolen, and not even that, just monitoring somebody's thoughts and then having voice to skull respond to their thoughts, and thoughts are being manipulated, visuals are being put in, inner voice thoughts, language stuff. Um, you know, so cognitive liberty is a huge serious issue that needs to be on the forefront of what every human being in the world is talking about. And, you know, hopefully the UN will, you know, push that along. Uh, new groups talking about such things as cognitive liberty, the right to have full ownership of your own thoughts, have begun to form, but must go more mainstream because of the ultimate danger of corporations, intelligence agencies, and other powerful organizations using these advanced neuroweapons secretly and for severely nefarious uh, means. The people that harass the victims of torture in their communities work for federal organizations and consider what they are doing surveillance work, make money for their inhumane activities, and actually think they are protecting their communities. The perception of what they are doing in their societies to further harm victims of devastating torture is a huge inversion of reality of what their actions are actually, actually accomplishing. The UN must investigate and force countries to reveal these illicit experimentation programs. Every country must agree never to involuntarily experiment on its citizens. There must be constant inspections and no agency within any country should ever be exempt to audit to make sure they are not involuntarily slaughtering innocent citizens who have done nothing wrong. Alright guys, so, so that's it. Oh, okay, have one more, one more paragraph. Didn't, didn't know that. Uh, please stop these horrific, never-ending... I switched that one, right? I had this one um, before this stuff that I had written, and I switched it to the bottom, because it's kind of a plea to the UN, right? And I think that's a good idea. Um, and like I said, you know, you target individuals that are sending in an email, um, you know, send in what you think is important. I think it would be good, like, on the end to have... Um, what you think needs to be done, right? Who you think needs to be looked into in these countries to stop them from doing it. Uni unilateral um, investigations of every country for this type of torture. And I think, like I said on the last video, it's hopeful that it's not one country. And, and you know, Poland has spoken out a lot about this. Um, but I think when one country speaks out, it's like the military industrial complex is not going to stop because it's going to be like, no, 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 China and Russia, they're going to get ahead of us in this weapons technology. But if the UN unilaterally creates changes, it can be very hopeful. And every country has to agree, has to agree to, to, to make severe changes to this, to just torturing individuals and all this crap. Gosh, please, God, please, God. I, I, I want targeted individuals, because this is like the worst long-term torture. I know there's other types of torture that like somebody being physically with somebody and torturing them that can be very devastating but this is like the worst never-ending uh, remote you know torture in the world. I would say it's like number one number one it's the number one most evil thing in the world. I mean hands down. Uh, please stop these horrific, never-ending torture and harassment programs. They have destroyed and continue to destroy so many lives, including my own. It is never-ending imprisonment in an electromagnetic cage and of the mind, not to mention the isolation that comes from it feeling like you are cut off from the world and your own family. I believe the intelligence agencies and contractors doing this targeted individuals are doing this for weapons development mapping the brain and using innocent citizens for many different purposes including feeding us to federal programs like DHS fusion centers to justify those organizations existence there's many other purposes they're doing this too guys um, I kind of just wanted to sum it up in like some big ones some big angles you know the experimentation the experimentation of the brain and how you can mess with people's belief 
and what they believe is going on in the world, how you can disconnect people from other people, make people paranoid of each other, um, all kinds of different socio-political purposes for weapons like this, control of the masses, um, and then you've got like, um, you know, actually trying to, you know, turn people into Manchurian candidates to do awful acts that then agent, certain agencies can jump in, get more funding, justify their existence, and turn those uh, crises into, you know, whatever they want. See what kind of angles they can get out of it. Um, and then, um, what was the other one that I said? I guess those are the most important. And, and map, mapping the brain and and obviously you know training research and development on the weapon systems how you know because with me they're doing you know and I'm sure with a lot of you guys they do such sophisticated things and like I'll use a certain defense and they'll maybe turn that against me or whatever and it's like very sophisticated and fine-tuning like how to use the electromagnetic spectrum um, so so um, you know, networking with other uh, murderers groups um, and, and learning how to use these electromagnetic frequencies and scalar waves, um, you know, better uh, to get through things um, and to, to control the mind quicker, to actually, to actually get the mind control going faster, right? Because for me, it seems like, and I think for a lot of other target individuals, I, you know, some target individuals, the mind control happens quick. It just... It, we're built differently, right? Um, but for me, it's been a lot of trauma, many years to get to get kind of where they want my brain. That not they're not even completely there yet. Cause I keep, you know, and I think for all of us, we keep resisting, but they want to get it more streamlined. You know, many consumer, many consumer reasons and medical reasons too. So many angles that come off of this. Um, the dehumanization and destruction of human lives is the most unjust thing I've ever known of during my life on Earth. Hands down. Hands down. It's the, the worst thing. I know that there have been massacres and genocides, but I see those as kind of merciful. Um, that may be a weird thing to say, but I, but I think when there are like are mass, mass genocides and it's killing people quickly, it's, it's kind of better than this. It's kind of better than messing, you know, chaining up somebody's mind, mind controlling it, leaving them walking around but can't live life. You know, we can. We can do things in life and we are free in the spirit. But y'all know what I mean. You can't live the life that you want. You're isolated. Like, I, I, I'm i like, I don't know. I need to get a job, but I don't know if I'm how horrible the torture is going to be. Just really leaving somebody walking around but almost dead. I hate, I hate saying stuff that's so negative, but I really want to convey, and we're fighting, right? We're fighting and we're trying to remain positive, but it's really bad. It's, you know, it's, it's, try, it's stealing our lives, but leaving us alive. It's worse than just killing somebody. It, it, my bottom line point, it's worse than just killing somebody. In some ways, I'm glad that I'm still alive. I am glad that I'm still alive, and I'm going to keep fighting, and I, I do... I confess I still believe, you know, I believe in Mary, even with how horrible, I just, I, so many good people in the world, there's so many good people in the world, there's a lot of ignorant good people in the world, so I think we've got to understand that, there's a lot of good people in the world who don't necessarily know what the hell is going on, in a lot of things, not just targeting, and that's, that's the whole point of, you know, the top of the pyramid. They know there's a lot of good people in the world. And that's why they do these things. They condition people for so many years to be like, oh, if you say you're being hit with, hit by the government, uh, uh, thought controlled or anything, you're a tinfoil hat wearing uh, mentally ill person. They prepare it so that you'll have good people who really don't think it's happening and think that anybody talking about this is mentally ill. And then they do unintentional evil, right? It has to be that way, because if everybody was on the same page, the percentage of good people in the world is much better, is, is much bigger than really evil people in the world. So that's, that's a hopeful thought, you know. Um, so there's no justification for this kind of murder and torture to exist in any country. Um, even though these uh, paragraphs are far from doing justice to how horrifying this torture and harassment truly is, it can give you a place to start in understanding how truly gruesome these programs are. 
Please help us and may God bless your endeavors to end these nightmare programs. I'm really hoping if, if a lot of us send in, you know, testimonies and then, you know, do your your experiences and then, um, you know, in that you can say, you know, who, who you think's doing it in general or if you want to say specifically or whatever. I don't think it matters as long as they get the bottom line. And then, you know, like, what needs to be changed? These systems are, you know, completely corrupt. And there's so much money. There's so much money involved in this evil that people are like, oh, well, uh, you know, those people deserve to be killed because there's so much money. And that's my life. That That's my life murdering these people. And these contractors are like, well, that's my job. It's this job manufacturing these weapons. And you know, we got to manufacture, do training, research, and development. So the people that we pick, they deserve to die, right? It's a, it, money, there's so much money in it. And then it's like, and it's such a big deal. And like, if you speak out about it, you're probably going to get targeted. So people who don't know about it, they're like, oh, I don't want my family to be killed. So by force, by force, fear, and, um, and you know, money, and money control. It's like all the biggest levers of humanity, right? controlling programs like these, controlling people not speaking out about them, controlling people to not believe them, controlling people who maybe thought they were honorable or something like that to actually participate in murder, participate in harassment of somebody innocent and just say, well, they must have did something. You know, I've, I, I got a guy out here and like, you know, he's an ex-Marine and, you know, he, he like he does gang stalk me. It's very weird because he, he's a good guy. Like, but he's, I know what's in his head. He's heard something about me, and he's like, they wouldn't have picked this guy if he wasn't bad. And he wants to make money. And I think a lot of people do that. So it's like, it's, you know, that that's the, the whole thing at the top of the pyramid, to confuse everybody. To confuse everybody so people's actions cannot be pure. So that they don't have all the information, and how they act in the world is going to be effed up, and it's going to be unintentional evil. And I think a lot of us are in that position I think targeted individuals less so. We see how, you know, targeted individuals and people who look for the deepest truths, I think we're going to be better in how we act and what we do because we see the manipulation. But the, the biggest percentage of the world, good and bad people, are being manipulated so bad that and don't know what's going on, so their actions are just going to create more chaos and more confusion and give uh, the evil people the top of the pyramid and a lot of these agencies you know, more control. It's going to play right into their hands. Um, that's why a lot of the times I say I say this stuff is very counterintuitive. It's like you know, and, and I you know somebody somebody left the comment saying they they really didn't. They were like, eh, I don't think Kyle knows a lot about the riot the riots, and it's a lot more complicated. And I understand their their comment. I mean, I, I think, but my, my big point is that as a targeted individual, and there's peaceful protest, right? So they were talking about peaceful protest too. But like as a targeted individual, I've thought about that a lot. Like we may need some kind of revolution where we take back our power and it may not be able to be through the system, right? But you start thinking about it and you start thinking about how doing the wrong thing, taking the wrong step can play right into their hands, can play right into the powers that be, powers that shouldn't be uh, their hands. I may read that comment on a later live stream, and you, like, you know, people disagree with me all the time, I'm sure. Um, and it is a, that's a very com. What's going on? There's some good things coming out of the protests, and you know, people waking up stuff. But then there's some. Ba it's like unbalancing some things. It's good that people want to have a revolution. Um, I was thinking about it. It's like, why are they not? Because because there there is racism. There is racism. Uh, I don't know on the top on the top of the system that there's a lot of systemic racism, and I'm sure people you can comment if you disagree with me. But this program, I just want to say this. I don't I don't know about what I and I'm looking into things. I don't know. I, I think you know. Okay, but but anyway, this program, the the targeting program, is severely racist. Eugenics is severely racist. So in this targeting program, black men and black women are the biggest percentage of those experimented on in torture. I was thinking it's it's like 60 to 65 percent women are targeted individuals, and out of that 65 percent, it's probably about 
60% that are black women. And then the rest of the percentage, 35% men are targeted, 35 to 40% of men are targeted, something like that. Um, and probably out of that, it's like 60 60% are black men. So this program is definitely racist. And I think that that should be being talked about in society. Eugenics is, is an extremely racist thing. You know, eugenics and like, we're just gonna pick some people to experiment on. And uh, you know, you can just see it. You can see it as a targeted individual. Um, so there's definitely racism. Um, I just don't know. I, I think that, that my, my whole point, I guess this is my whole point, that if we don't understand how things work and everything that's happening, any of our actions can make things so much worse than what they were, right? If we don't step carefully. Um, I, I see that happen. I see that happening in the world. Um, so, I see that happening in the world with, you know, with all, okay, so I won't get into that, but guys, I just wanted to read that to y'all. Um, just wanted to read that to you guys um, and just give y'all some ideas. And I'm going to go ahead, like, I may make a couple more changes um, and then get this in tomorrow during the day. Please, like, just just send in something. Send in something if you're a targeted individual and you're watching this video and you're like, I don't know if it'll do any good. Please just send in, like, a page of, of just, you know, what's going on with you and, like, who's doing it, you know. Um, because because then you know we can be the, the central focus of this meeting with the U, the UN Raptor um, 75th whatever meeting. Um, all right, guys, I love y'all. I hope I hope everybody's like staying relatively safe, relatively comfortable. Um, I'll I'll be trying to do more things, but I'm kind of just you know pacing myself and trying to stay calm and not lose my mind. Um, I know, I know everybody kind of understands that, but I love you guys. I hope everybody's doing relatively well, and God bless you, and God bless and protect all of your families. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. Love you guys. I'll see you all in the next.